Then the Lord God spoke, excuse me, then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And if you look up that word keep in the Hebrew, it means to me, when I see the word keep, it, it just doesn't tell everything that that the word really means. And what God is trying to tell us, and what he was, and when it was pinned down, why it, this word was picked, that, that the inspired writer would pick this certain word. And when you start looking at the word and you break it open, and it, it I want to paraphrase it, or not paraphrase it, but give you the meaning by, by, by changing how it reads. It says, then the Lord took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend it and to appreciate it, to protect it, to guard it. And, it, and, it, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you will surely die. It's amazing to me that God has always wanted the best for the human race. Because in the first days, of, in the first six days of creation, He made every, everything that man could even think about or want or need. Everything was presented to Him. And on the sixth day, what, what happened the next day? He rested. That's amazing that, that God would create this man, give him everything he wanted, tell him to appreciate what he gave him, and then I want you to rest on this day. God has always been looking for creatures that would serve him out of a love for him. The angels of heaven to serve Him because they love Him, not because they have to serve Him. And it's the same with us human beings. He wanted us to serve Him, not because we were scared of Him, but afraid of Him even, to, uh, and, and, uh, and, and not for us to get a reward from Him. His desire for us was to experience everything that He had given us. That, that, and He wanted us to see that, that what He gave us was enough. 
Was it enough? He had one rule. One rule that he gave the human race. And the human race was Adam and Eve. We were all in Adam and Eve. Adam. Does anybody know what the word Adam means? Mankind. Now Eve was thinking, well, I don't know what Eve exactly was thinking, but, but it says in the Bible that she wandered near, the, near this tree. Now, she placed herself where she should not have been. And we all do that. We all place ourselves where we should not go. Or, or we, and we, we know that we're not supposed to be here when we go to these places. Now, she placed herself where she shouldn't have been. Now, she chose the circumstances that put her in the vicinity of the forbidden tree. Did she not choose the circumstances? Satan could not... He, he, he could not make Eve sin. Satan doesn't have the power over any of you to make you sin. You have to choose to sin. Sin requires participation. Before sin, we, we were God dependent. We depended on God for everything. And he get, and what did he not give us everything? All food, everything. As a matter of fact, the whole world, I, th I see that every living creature has an umbilical cord that hooks to God. Because without God, this creation of ours would cease. The only reason that we are here. Today is because of Jesus Christ. That, there is no other reason for humankind to be on this planet. Except for Jesus. Now when, see, when, when Eve, but what, what God did on the, what do we, what are we to do on the Sabbath day? We are to rest on the Sabbath day. Satan, after Eve wandered near the bush or near the tree, the forbidden tree, was tempted. Now we're talking about a being who has um, convinced a third of all the angels of heaven, and this is in heaven where you are, I, where you and I want to be someday. Satan or Lucifer tempted a third of the angels to come and be and follow him. Now we're talking about a being who has I, I don't know how to say this, but he's got a lot of a smart. I mean he, he's, he's a smart a smart being. But I mean when you when it all boils down to it, he, he he's uh, he's the adversary. Now he convinced a third of the angels in the atmosphere of heaven to rebel against God. Now, does Eve have even a chance of standing up to this creature who is so cunning, so beautiful? Because he is a, he's an angel, and he presents he's presented as an angel of light. So Eve is convinced that God hasn't given her enough. That, that there's more. So God, so Eve believes Satan that, that God is holding something back from her. Now, uh, when Eve, to 
chose to be self-dependent instead of God-dependent, she gave up that rest that God had given us. On the sixth day, God created man. And on the seventh day, we rested. Well, on the, when, when Eve sinned, she gave up that rest. She chose to be self-dependent. And ever since Eve has chose to be self-dependent, and of course Adam chose Eve, and he also sinned, we have been self-dependent for 6,000 years. Now the products of self-dependent, the byproduct of self-dependence, is mentioned in uh, Galatians 5.19. And I think it's worth us going there. Let's go to Galatians 5.19. And that's 5.19 through 21. It says, but the, it says, I, it says, now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, Hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, evil, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So, the products of self-dependence are, are the fruits of evil. And the, the products of God dependence, which is Galatians 5, 22 through 24, it's, it's the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. When Eve gave up her God dependence for self-dependence, she also gave up her rest. Let's go to uh, Matthew 11. Starting with verse 28. Actually, I would like to read a quote from Desire of Ages. And this comes from uh, the chapter called uh, The Invitation. It says, Tenderly he bade the toiling people, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, and I will, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for you, unto your souls. In these words, Christ is speaking to every human being, whether they know it or not. All are weary and heavy laden. He says that we are all weary and heavy laden. Does that sound like your life? Oh, yeah. It says, all are weighed down with burdens that only Christ can remove. It says, the, the heaviest burden that we bear is the burden of sin. If we were left to bear this burden, it would crush us, but the sinless one has taken our place. Now, we will be crushed if we don't accept what Christ has done for the human race. And we will eventually be crushed. So what are the wages of sin? Death. Let's go to uh, Matthew 11, verse 28. He says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, remember back in the garden when Eve before Eve sinned, what did God give Adam and Eve everything that they needed or wanted? And wasn't that enough? Now, Jesus is trying to give it back to us now. We had a perfect creation. God gave us a perfect creation, but it wasn't enough. Now God has given us a perfect creation. We have, we have been given a perfect redemption.
And it is going to lead to a perfect restoration. So, back to our scripture verse. He says, take my yoke upon you. And this, this verse right here, it just, it, it was, it spoke to my heart. And I know it's got to speak to your heart. It says, and, and this is, it's just an incredible verse. It says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. That word souls is we get the word that soul from the the, the Greek is P S U C H E psyche. So we get the word psychology from this word souls. And what is psychology? It's, it's speaking of the mind. So where do we find rest? Where do we need rest? Do our body or our, our bodies get worn out? But really, where Mrs. White says that 90% of the things that go wrong or the sicknesses in our lives come from where? Mind. The mind. So what is Jesus saying to us? He said, I want to give you rest. I want you to come away from this thinking that you have inherited from Adam. I am going to give you rest. Now, let's go and this... I should have read this verse way earlier. Maybe I did. I just don't remember. Philippians chapter 2. I, 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 I used to read this verse and, and it, I used to fear and tremble because Philippians chapter 2 verse 12 the, the last part of the verse says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling now if you stop at that verse you have no hope if you stop at that verse you have no hope the very next verse says for it is God who works in you both to will and to do His good pleasure. Now, His good pleasure, what was His good pleasure when He created the earth? His good pleasure when He created the earth was to give you everything. Leaving out nothing. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. 
that whosoever should believe in him should not perish. So this, this rest, as I've been saying, is the rest in the mind. It's that word psychology. And we have, in our society, we have tried to substitute this rest with, with all kinds of, of addictions, you might say. The re this, this rest has been substituted. Without the rest, we're, we're searching for something, and we fill it up with drugs, with alcohol, with pornography. And Jesus is offering us His rest so we can escape these things. So where So what is Jesus doing today? Where's all of heaven focused today? Where is Jesus today? In the most holy place. We as Adventists should know that. So, everyone is, is a potential citizen for heaven. A living experience must begin here. And now, without that living experience here and now, so, what? What brings? What it is love of self that brings unrest? Jesus is looking for a people that will simply allow him to recreate his character in them. As through Jesus we enter into rest, heaven begins here. We respond to his invitation, come, learn of me, and in thus coming we begin the life eternal. Heaven is a ceaseless approaching to God through Christ. Tomorrow is... Of course, Christmas Day. Do we? What is Jesus' reward? What is Jesus' gift? What is our gift? What is our gift to him? Is that not always been the message from creation? He asked Adam and Eve to give themselves to him. Is not today the day of salvation that we should give ourselves to Him? Yes. In chapter 13 of Philippians, it says that God does the work. So we have to allow God to work in each one of us to bring about this God dependence rather than the self dependence that we all have. Let us not wait until Christmas Day to give God the gift that He desires. He wants us to give us ourselves. It is to each one of us we have to examine ourselves to give ourselves to God. Right. Can we turn back to Galatians 6? Yes. Galatians 5, 6. I, I think I, I'm hearing what you're saying. And where you went with Galatians 5 and in 19, it says, now the works with an S. Okay? If I'm, if I'm good. 
519. Now the works with the S is plural, correct? Yeah. So that I'm doing a, I'm doing works, then I get a paycheck, right? Yeah. And this is my paycheck, right? Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, all this stuff, right? But, but this is what I hear you say with the rest, if I if I want to go down into verse 22, but the fruit with no S, the fruit. You see this? This isn't work. Amen. This is God's doing, right? But if I'm going to depend and rest upon God, as you're saying, then but the fruit of the Spirit, I get all these things. And it's not my doing. Amen. Right. Well, and it is, it's, that's what I've been trying. That's what I'm trying. That's what I'm saying. That it is not it, us at all. It's God. It's a byproduct of a relationship with with God. And Romans six sixteen says, "You are a slave to 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 that one that you present yourself to obey." So if you're obeying. God, you're resting. Amen. And if you're not obeying God, then you have no peace. There is no peace in your life, and you're going to look for that peace, like I said, in drugs, alcohol, pornography, television. Any escape that brings our minds away from God, our psyches, our mind separates us from the only true source of health that the human being has, the human agent has, is God. Amen. And God is drawing us. He, it says that in heaven, in the sanctuary, where Jesus is, it says that He's cleansing the sanctuary. What's He cleansing the sanctuary of? Sin. Well, if the sins are continually going up to Him, how is He ever going to get out of there? He can't. He can't. Until He has a people. An entire generation. And that's what, that, that just, that blows me away. That he, an entire generation who will Say yes, thank you. As all he asks of any of, of Adam and Eve, the Hebrews at Mount Sinai, all he asked was to listen to me. And I will give you rest. I will make you that special people that you can he will do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. And he's always tried, he's all, that has been his operation always. Doing for the human race what the human race cannot do for itself. There is nothing you can do in your human power that could bring you to God. Only God, when he says in Revelation 2.20, he says that in our opening uh, verse that Ray read, he, he's the one that is knocking on the door of our hearts to bring us. It is His energy. It is His work. I don't know how else, how much plainer I can say that. He loves us, and He's loved us since He created Adam and Eve. He's loved every person. There's not, He is no respecter of persons. My prayer today is that you examine yourselves before God. That you study His Word. That is the only way you can get to know Him, is studying His Word. We have Bible studies on Tuesday nights. We have Bible studies on Thursdays. And if anyone wants to study Scripture, ask me and I'll come to your house. Or I'll meet you here at church. That we give ourselves as a gift. Because we are Jesus Christ's reward. Because He went to that cross for a reason. Because He loved us so much. And if one of you, if, he, if only one of you, 
were lived on this planet, he would have died that death for you. Amen. 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 The closing hymn is 